Welcome back to Active Vernon. This is part two of our fall vacation 2023. If you missed part one, the link is in the description below. In this video, you'll see Adventure Girl and I on a cycling vacation starting from Valencia and going towards Barcelona. So here we are in Valencia. It was a long 12 hour day to travel on diagonally directly across the country so we were happy to arrive at our hotel room in Valencia where we're here for five nights and uh, we spent the the first uh, three days just really relaxing and walking around the the old town and the Turia Gardens uh, before our, our bikes were being delivered to us on the Friday. What a beautiful place this Turia Gardens is. They are so lucky to have this linear park in the city. It's the old Turia riverbed. The river used to um, flood, and so they diverted the river and made the riverbed into this this lovely park with bike path and cycling path and walking path and flowers, and it's really lovely. This is the Mercado Central, the big market in uh, the old town of Valencia. So much fresh, beautiful fruit and vegetables. You, you get hungry, definitely, just walking around in there. Yeah. And this man was just sitting on a bench playing his, his guitar. At the west end of the uh, Turia Gardens is the big arts and science complex. The very modern buildings that house museums and the music center and science center. science center. Valencia is the third largest city in Spain and it's really a mix of old and new. And these buildings are huge, like monstrously large. Very hard to take a photograph of the entire building, but there's lots of beautiful angles and it, they're nicely sculpted. They're, yeah, yeah, it's just it's it's just stunning. And this was less than five minute walk from the hotel we were staying at. We did have to take a bus to go to the market to the old town, but it was nice being able to walk out of our hotel and in you know five minutes being on the pathways. This is just off the old part of town, the oldest part of town, actually, I guess. Yeah. Um, Within the walled section of the old town. This is one of the gates into the old town. This bridge is from the 1500s. It had been damaged a number of times and was rebuilt in the 30s and changed into a pedestrian only bridge. Uh, now we have our bikes and we're riding out to the Albufera Nature Park. Um, Valencia is very flat and a lot of this was along the sea. Yeah, the mountains are actually just overpasses. <laughs> but you can see here, just going over this, multi-lane highway that we definitely were in a port city. Uh. The Albufera Nature Park is about 20 kilometers uh, south of Valencia. Easily accessible on bike. We were on bike route almost the whole time, just a tiny little short section on the road. The Albufera Lake is the largest inland lake in Spain, and it's an important uh, area for many species of, of birds on their migration to the Sahara. Yeah, but for the most part, our ride took us right by the ocean. ocean? That's not ocean. That's the Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> Sometimes the beach was a really long ways out to the water. 
We found it was very dry, like the Okanagan, it's been, it's been very dry there. At the Albafira Nature Park, there's a village called El Parmar, and that's where the birthplace of paella is, so we had to try paella. The next morning, Jesus picked us up and drove us about two hours out of Valencia and dropped us off on the Via Verde uh, to ride towards Mora de Rubielos. Absolutely stunning ride on, on this old rail bed. Uh, rail bed that's been converted into um, a pedestrian and cycling route. Yeah, I'd say two thirds to three quarters of our ride that day was on, on the rail trail. We stopped quite a bit to take photos and just look at the olive plantations. Yeah, and just admire the scenery. The scenery is so different from home. It's just just beautiful. We had been warned that going into the mountains, we were um, at about a thousand meters, so it'd be, it would be higher and it would be colder, but it was unseasonably warm in um, Valencia. This is the first week of, the end of the first week of October and it was very warm. We both had e-bikes for this trip, which was a lot of fun. And there's good signage and our, the instructions provided by the tour operator were excellent. Yeah, they were absolutely perfect in terms of um, you know, where, where to turn and what to watch for, as well as interesting things that um, you would see in some restaurant recommendations. A few tunnels. <laughs> there were some short tunnels and then there was this really long tunnel that was really scary because I hadn't quite figured out how to turn the light on on my bike. And uh, yeah, it was kind of dark and kind of scary. I took, of course, I took my sunglasses off and I'm holding them in my hand and then I dropped them. Certainly had the adrenaline going through this part. <laughs> yeah, the video camera shows it lighter than it really was though. And as we got It later, was more like it, that. It was, it was like dark. This, yeah. yeah. Get my sunglasses. Don't ride over them. <laughs> But they're, they're just that one really long one. Yeah. Yeah. And then we came out on, we had a short section on the road, and then we were at Mora de Rubielos. It was um, uh, the quaint weekend. It was a quaint little place, but it was the weekend. And it was a long weekend in Valencia, so there was a lot of local Valencians um, in these two couple little towns that we're in next. And, the next day was all on pavement as we rode towards Montaneos, but it was a very quiet two-lane highway. Um, all the drivers, car drivers that passed us were considerate, had no, no issues at all with riding on the road. It was just, it was, it was lovely. And this is Rubielos de Mora not to be confused with Mora de Rubielos. This is inside the church. There was a tour there just ahead of us. And then we continued on. We're heading for Montanejos. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't that hard a ride, but it was it was hilly, but with the e-bike it wasn't a problem. Actually, even without an e-bike, it would, wouldn't be much of a problem. Yeah. They were and, rolly kind of hills. Yeah, and it was only in the 40-ish kilometer range, less than 50. Yeah, we arrived early, yeah. thinking it was going to be a yeah. harder ride. Yeah. We stayed two nights in Montaneos, uh, just to have a break and have a walk around. It was very hard to find a restaurant open for lunch the first day, or that had space. There was a lot of people already reserved, but we found this lovely, lovely place, had a lovely lunch, and then a, just a light dinner. Heard a concert from right outside our hotel room window 
and then we spent the afternoon, the following afternoon, just walking around the town. The river through Monteneos is said to have healing properties. This town is from the time of the Moors, and the Moorish king felt that that by bathing in these waters that um, you would have health and, and beauty and he built this spa area for his wives. Um, I don't know how true that, <laughs> that is, but that it was very, very lovely. And there were public baths, like a spa, that you could go go to. We walked part way up, but we, we didn't go in the river. I did go to the spa at the hotel. And then uh, we rode towards Onda which again was only 40-ish kilometers on a secondary highway that had hardly any traffic at all. And um, Lots of beautiful views. Yeah. I can see why they chose that, uh, that roadway, yeah. Yeah. And in Onda, we were there to be picked up, to be taken back to the ocean. So we had a really nice long lunch as we waited for our transfer. And then Jesus picked us up again and drove us out from Onda out to the coast at El Grau de Castellon, uh, because it is a very industrial area after Onda and so not as pleasant riding. And uh, when we were, after we got checked in, we went for a walk around and had a little uh, a snack at a pub and then found a grocery store and picked up a few things for for a light dinner on our deck because we had a lovely deck looking at the marina. Then we rode from Castellon to Alcosabre. So as we started off on designated bike route, uh, it's all very flat through here and along the Mediterranean. It was just, it was just lovely. Um, yeah, it was one of our nicest days of ride. Yeah, I mean, they ha they have converted so much oceanfront into boardwalk and just making it as pleasant as can be they've done a super darn good job it's it's really stunning and after we left some of the front the sea frontage uh, we were on this other via verde and then we're also on i believe it was ruta 10 cycling route that took us through some farmland but just you know little narrow paved road and um, through the field, it was just, it was lovely. And then we were back on to uh, seafront promenade again. But this, uh, this rail trail here, you can, you can imagine how loud it would have been with the trains going through. Yeah, it. and it was well, well used. There was uh, lots of people walking and riding. Really enjoyed this day. I enjoyed the whole trip, but this day and our last, the next day, are really yeah, stand out. St standout riding. It was like every day was getting to be the best day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> every, every day was better than the, the previous. It was a school group. That was kind of cute. Yeah. I was afraid one, somebody was going to run out. One of these kids would run out in front of me at the in the tunnel, but uh, they didn't. They were all well behaved. And this is riding through on the Route 10, and up through through farmland. Oh, we had a flat. There's a little thorn from the tube. Now, we had a spare tube, but no patch kit, and only one spare tube between uh, the, two, the two of us. Yeah. So. Yeah. So once we got the flat fixed and finished our lunch, we continued on, and uh, this is arriving into Alcasabre, which is where we were staying for the evening. Alcasabre is just a lovely little town on the Mediterranean. 
I did not want to leave here. <laughs> There's many restaurants along the promenade. We were staying at the North End at the Grand Hotel Grand Las Fuentes. And on our last day, we rode from Alcazabre to Penascola through the Sierra de Erta Park. Absolutely stunning. Just loved, loved, loved this day. Just note the amount of gravel and stones there. This is what we've gone over here in already is probably the roughest sections, but we were still warned that it was it was going to be a, a tough day and and quite frankly, it wasn't a really tough day. It was just a gravel road. But if you're not used to gravel roads, I suppose it could be yeah. a tough day. And and when you, you say we were warned that it was going to be a tough day, we were warned by people on a tour group that were going the opposite direction and staying at the same hotel. Our trip notes had in, uh, implied that, you know, that said that there was, you know, a couple of hills where you might want to get off and walk. But really, if you've ridden a mountain bike at all, this was very not not difficult riding at, at all it was it was wonderful and there was these beaches along the way we saw lots of people riding running hiking and hunting, hunting. <laughs> um, and people were friendly and it was it was just beautiful this is one of the last protected uh, places on the Mediterranean that hasn't been developed and I just think it's so wonderful that it it has been pr protected and that we were fortunate to be able to ride this. Yeah and as you can see not a lot of people so we were uh, yeah we'd see people maybe every 15 minutes or yeah. half hour or so. We should have stopped and swam because there was a number of places that we could have gone in um, but we but it was we ha it was still reasonably early in the morning and well we were yeah. warned so we left early yeah and it turned out to be we could have taken our time yeah yeah What I found interesting in this park where there were some steep up and some steep down sections, the short section of the hill were concrete or paved, like they've intentionally gone in and paved the, the hill part in, in some, some sections. Other thing I found interesting was that cars are driving through here and we saw a couple of people trying to bring their small RVs through here. I'm not sure I would drive a low clearance vehicle or an RV on this road. Here's a section where the hill is paved and then we're up at this lookout and that's Penascola in the distance and that is our destination for the day. And we stayed at Hosteria del Mar. Uh, for two nights in Penascola and it was this was sunrise it was just stunning yeah there was a pool there was some um, we're looking out over the restaurant or one of the two restaurants yeah uh, we walked a couple kilometers to the fort and walked all around the fort and the old town uh, lots of little shops and and things it's a beautiful warm day uh, here at, we're at the mid of, middle of October and it's still warm and sunny. You know, we could still eat all three meals outside if we wanted to mm -hmm. in mid-October. Yeah. And it was really only breakfast that we had inside in most places because they That's had right. breakfast in the breakfast room of, of the hotel. But lunch and dinner, we were, we were mostly outside. And not needing a sweater. Yeah. In the, in the evenings. That's where we came from. That's towards Alcacebre. So you can see it does look rough, but... <laughs> and this was the beach. It, it looks crowded, but it really didn't feel crowded. And the Mediterranean was just lovely. It was the sandy bottom. There was 
no undercurrent and just these lovely little waves. Had a wonderful lunch. But we have to go after a couple days. Yeah, and so there's promenade um, along the seafront from Penascola to Benicarlo. Uh, Benicarlo is where the train station is. So it was six kilometers to the town and then another two kilometers away from the sea to the train station. And we were taking the train to Barcelona to spend three nights there. Yeah, they've really done the boardwalks up really well. Yeah, lots of lots of people were out using them. You could th you know, people were walking as part of their daily routine. <laughs> now, how long was that train ride? Like a couple hours? It was like two and a half hours. with information signs. I should mention that the little green stuff sack attached to my backpack is food. <laughs> we wanted to have our snacks easily accessible and our travel agent had given us these uh, these little bags, a series of bags, so I used one of mine for, for food. In Barcelona, we stayed on La Ramblas at uh, Hotel La Rambla, and which is the sort of the main tourist street and many kilometers of shops <laughs> ma many kilometers long there's sidewalk traffic lane big pedestrian middle section and then the same on the other other side so it was kind of rainy and, and overcast in barcelona but we um we managed to have coffee quite a bit <laughs> this was a little coffee shop right across the street from the hotel the sun did come out a little bit when we were down at the sea having a meal uh, we found it was actually cheaper to eat at the seaside cafes than on la rambla um, the drinks on the La Rambla were very expensive, probably three times what they, what we had been paying for beer and wine. Yeah, a gorgeous place. You didn't go in the, go to it for a swim though. No, I didn't. It wasn't really warm enough. Tapas, tapas, tapas. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. Thanks for joining us. It was a lovely trip. <laughs>